One of the key elements in underwater navigation and being successful at it is making sure that you have the proper equipment and training to do that. Today we're going to take a look at several different compasses and we're going to start a series on underwater navigation and hopefully it'll help you when you're trying to navigate underwater. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hicker Scuba Marina and today is going to be the start of a series on underwater navigation and primarily we're going to be focusing on compass navigation, not so much on natural or line navigation but compass navigation. So what we're going to do to start this series out is we're going to look at several different compasses here. I'm going to show you how they attach to your equipment and the proper usage of that compass based off how it attaches to you. We're also going to be looking at the features of a compass and then later on in this series we're going to take you over to the pool, we're going to show you how we personally train our students here and then to end the series out we're going to take you out on an actual open water dive and take everything that we've learned from this video the second video and we're going to put it into a real life scenario and I'm going to take you on an underwater navigational dive and show you just how simple it actually is so let's take a real quick look at several different compasses and look at the features of each and then I'll show you how to set them up on your equipment all right, so let's take a closer look at each different style of compass, and I'll talk a little bit about how you operate them or how you attach them to you while diving. Um, the first one that we're gonna look at, of course, is just a standard console mount compass. Now, a lot of times you'll see this on, say, a two or three gauge console where you may have a pressure gauge, a depth gauge, and a compass, or in this particular situation, we simply got a pressure gauge and a compass. Uh, these are actually very popular, say, for uh, recreational divers or resort divers, where they're only diving in the tropics and they don't wanna take a lot of extra your gear. Well, the cool thing about this is, is you're never going to leave your compass at home because it is attached to your reg system. Um, probably a little bit more popular than that are the wrist style compasses and they come in several different forms. This is just a standard wrist strap here. This is an XS scuba combo unit here. And of course you can get it like the ones I prefer. They actually have the bungee straps. Now the cool thing about the bungee straps, I can either run it of course up on my wrist if I want to, just like I could with this, or I can actually maneuver it down to my hand and just kind of spider my fingers through it and I can wear it on my wrist. Now a lot of times in one of my dry suits, because I got big old thick uh, gloves here or rings for my glove system, I'll actually wear it on my hand. Primarily in a wetsuit, I'm actually going to pull it up on my wrist. But it gives you a couple of different options with the bungee and it also makes it easier to get it on and off and to adjust because it's going to be depth compensating with that bungee system. Now the next one that we're going to look at is practically the exact same wrist style compass but it's broke down to its individual components. This one comes from XS Scuba of course and it's got these little slots here in the side that will actually fit fix the uh, wrist strap to it. Now if you decide that you don't want it on a wrist strap, maybe you do want it on a console or a hose system, this makes it very easy to attach because it comes with a little hose clamp. And basically what the hose clamp does is it just snaps up over the top of your hose, whatever hose you want to put it on, and then those sleeves where your wrist strap goes through actually snaps down on place and that way it allows you to mount it to any type of hose system out there. Next one that we're going to look at is the same compass once again, but we're going to look at how do you attach it, say, to a slate or, say, a retractor system. We can still use the exact same um, little sleeves here where the wrist strap goes through, and you can put it, say, on a retractor system. And the cool thing about the retractor system, if you leave it attached to your BC, you're always going to have it. You're never going to forget it if it's always attached. And all you got to do is simply pull it out to use it. When you're done using it, just ease it up. The retractor is going to bring it right back and just simply hangs on your BC. So that's actually another very popular design that a lot of divers here in our area use. Now the next one that we're gonna look at is not a standard analog compass, it's actually a digital compass. And this one happens to be on the uh, Mares Genius here. And a lot of times, all you gotta do is scroll through um, the menu till you find the compass. And then once you find it, you're going to see that it comes up in a digital format. Now the benefit to a digital compass is they are tilt compensating and you're going to learn a little bit later on why we don't ever want to tilt the compass. We always want to hold that compass level to make sure that it works. Well with a digital compass 
they are actually tilt compensating. So you can actually set it up to where no matter how you look at your computer, it's always gonna be accurate. The other big major benefit here is you can either run magnetic north or true north on most digital compasses to where most standard analog compasses, they're working off magnetic north only. So that's another benefit to here. Then the last type of compass we're gonna look at is not something that I really recommend as a primary compass. I know I use mine all the time and occasionally I'll use it for diving. Just maybe I've had to hand my compass off to a student or something like that and I'll always have a backup, but I don't really recommend the little button compasses like I've got here. This is just a little wrist mount Sunto. I know in a lot of our videos, you guys have asked what type of compass is on my wrist. Well, that's what it is. It's just a Sunto clipper. It just clips straight on to. Now, even though it works good, it's got a rotating bezel, which we'll get into a little bit later as well. It works, but it's still not my primary. It's not something I would recommend as your primary go-to underwater navigational device. It's just simply as a backup. Now, all that being said, here on the surface, I use this guy just about every single day. So I do like it for that purpose, but for underwater, I think I would rather have one of these systems instead of this as a primary. So now that we understand all the different types of compasses out there, let's zoom in a little bit closer and I'll show you the individual features of the compass and I'll talk about how you set it up and how we actually use it. All right guys, so taking a closer look at the compass itself, we're gonna look at the individual features and we're gonna talk briefly about how it actually works. So a compass is a pretty self-explanatory uh, device. It works off magnetism. Now we do have true magnetic north compasses and or true north compasses and then we have magnetic north compasses. These analog compasses are primarily gonna be your magnetic north compasses. The true north compasses, those are gonna be your digital compasses and you can set them up either for magnetic or true north. Um, as far as what you're going to use, it doesn't really matter as far as diving goes because you're not going to be diving a distance that, that's long enough that you're going to be off by any major um, degrees, if you will. Now, if you're flying in an airplane or something like that, it's going to be a little bit different. But for as far as diving goes, the magnetic north compasses are going to work just fine. Me personally, I actually prefer the analog compasses over the digital. Uh, I do think they're a little bit easier to use, although you do got to make sure that they're held level to where the digital compasses you don't. I just think the operations of this is a little bit easier than sitting there pushing buttons on a digital compass. So taking a closer look at the individual components, we're going to have a rotating bezel, we're going to have a view screen. We're also going to have a view window here on the side. Both the view window and the view screen is going to have a lubber line. We're going to have a dial card in the center that's got our navigational headings and our points of reference, which is north, south, east, and west. And then you're going to have the housing. Now, it's important to note that the housings are oil-filled, not water-filled. If they were water-filled and in extreme cold temperatures, they could freeze and bust the housing. And, of course, your compass ain't going to work after that. So most compasses today, especially the ones for diving, are going to be oil-filled, not water-filled. So how do we actually use it? Well, for basic compass navigation, they're really simple. You're going to simply hold it level. Now, if you're using a console style compass, you will notice that the console is slanted. So as it's slanted, it actually holds the compass level. So if I'm holding this out here in front of me and I've got it slanted so that I can see, say, the pressure gauge, my compass is always going to be flat and level. With a wrist style compass, it's a little bit um, a little bit more difficult to operate, but with a little bit of practice, it actually becomes pretty easy. So let's imagine for a second this is on my wrist. I'm going to temporarily put it on my arm. What you're going to do is take the arm that you're not using the compass on and you're going to point it in the direction that you want to go. Now, if I'm laid flat in the water column, if I'm laid in that horizontal, trimmed out, swimming position, I'm going to take my compass hand and I'm going to put it on my wrist. And that's going to actually hold it level and hold it steady while I'm navigating. If I start to turn, the compass will actually be locked in. It's not gonna be tilting or anything like that. So it's pretty simple to hold these guys level. The next thing you wanna do is either use your view window or your view screen here, and you're gonna find that lubber line, and you're gonna line that lubber line up perpendicular to you and your destination. So for video purposes, I'm gonna pretend that you guys are actually wearing a compass and I happen to be the destination. So as I'm lined up here, or as you're lined up here, you're either gonna look through the view window or the view screen itself. You're gonna make sure that red lubber line is perpendicular for you or to you and to your destination. 
And then you're gonna notice the dial card. We've got north, south, east, west. Now to keep this simple, we're not gonna be going over all these different headings in this video. That'll be for a more advanced navigational video. All you need to focus on is that north there. Now some compasses won't actually have the N for north. It'll be like this one where they got just a little pointer. That just simply means north. So if yours don't have an N on it, look for the arrow. This one actually has an N and north as well. We're gonna take the rotating bezel and we're gonna simply turn it. And what you wanna do is you wanna line up the index marker of zero, you can see the zero here. While holding it level, you wanna line up the index marker with north. So as you can see, index zero and north are lined up perfect. And as long as I hold that compass level and I always keep north and zero lined up while I'm swimming, I'm going to be going in a straight line. It's the most basic and simplest way to use a compass. Now we can actually reverse that for a reciprocal. To get your reciprocal once you've reached your destination while still holding the compass level, you're going to simply turn your index marker to where zero lines up with south. Then once you finished your dive and you're headed back to your exit point, when you turn your body, north and zero will automatically line right back up and that lets you know you're going in a straight reciprocal heading to what your navigational heading was. All right guys, so let's take a closer look at how we do 90 degree turns and 120 degree turns real quick. Um, it's actually very simple to do. The key is, is knowing which way do you turn the bezel versus which way do you actually turn your body. And in short, you're always gonna do the opposite of what you actually wanna do. So keeping the compass lined up in the straight navigational heading that we got, we're gonna pretend that you are the diver and that you're headed to a destination. Well, I'm a blockage in the destination and you're gonna actually have to go around me. So you guys are gonna be turning to the right I'm gonna actually turn my bezel to the left to help you guys out so to do that let's say I need to make a 90 degree turn instead of looking at any of the numbers we understand that if zero and north are lined up then a 90 degree turn in the opposite direction to say east would be west so all I'm gonna do is turn zero to west I know to know to be true that that's a 90 degree turn and then when I turn my body to the east you will notice that north and zero line right back up. And that's a accurate way to make an actual 90 degree turn without confusing yourself with all the numbers. Now, if I reset that, we can actually do the same thing with say a 120 degree turn, which would be an equilateral triangle, if you will except this time we are gonna to have to do a little bit of math. The same rule and principle is gonna apply though, if I wanna make my turn say to the right, I'm gonna actually turn my bezel to the left or in the opposite direction. Now I noticed that on the index marker, it says zero lined up with north. Now north is actually 180 on the actual dial card. So what I'm gonna do is noticing how the dial card, if I turn the bezel in that direction, the dial card's actually going a little bit lesser in degrees. So I'm gonna minus 120 from 180 and I know that my new heading would of course be the 60 degrees so as I turn my index marker to line up with say 60 degrees on the dial card then when I turn my body that 120 degrees I will notice that zero and north line right back up and it doesn't really matter which way you do it as long as you turn the bezel the opposite direction of what you're actually wanting to do and then turn your body zero and north will always be lined up with the exact heading that you actually need all right guys so that's going to be the end of the first part of the series on underwater navigation with a compass what we did today is we looked at several different analog compasses and we even talked a little bit about digital compasses and some of the features of it as far as the tilt compensating goes uh, me personally i actually like the analog a little bit better but what we're going to do in the second part of the series is i'm actually going to take you over to the pool with an actual student and we're going to show you how we allow them to train both at the surface and underwater for their basic open water course we may even throw in a little bit of navigation work as far as what we do in the navigation course as well based off the time frame I'm not sure if we'll actually get to that but then of course in the third part of the series I'm going to take you on an actual underwater navigational dive and I'm going to show you just how far you can actually take a compass while diving underwater guys I really hope you like the start to this series if you've got any questions on underwater navigation definitely drop me a comment down below and I'll try to answer it the best I can if you like this video smash that like button for me definitely share it as well as always make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter like us on Facebook Pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business.